Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Whitney Ward. Once again, here at Creme 2, we are beginning with social distancing. Tonight, Mark Hanrahan is joining us from his home. Hi, Mark. Hey, good evening, Whitney. Yeah, day two of anchoring from my home here on the South Hill. All things going well considering, but I want to let you know we are taking this social distancing thing seriously, so we're trying to limit the contact we have with people outside of our family. But we have a lot of headlines to get to tonight, so let's get straight to it. There are now 33 confirmed cases of coronavirus in Spokane County. Fortunately, there are no deaths, but several patients have been hospitalized. Statewide Washington health officials report more than 2,000 cases of coronavirus and 110 deaths. Meantime, Idaho has 79 confirmed coronavirus cases. Kootenai County reported two more confirmed cases today, so there are eight in the Panhandle area. Washington Governor Jay Inslee issued a statewide order to stay at home and stay healthy to help slow the spread of the coronavirus. That order is in effect immediately for residents and will last at least two weeks, he said. Only essential businesses may remain open to the public. And speaking of the governor today, he appointed a coronavirus SAR to lead the state's response to COVID-19. She is retired Vice Admiral Raquel Bono. She'll now direct the state's response. She spoke with reporters on a conference call earlier today. Krem 2's Casey Decker was also on that call to listen in. Casey, good evening. And first off, what is her top priority going forward? Well, Mark, it's basically just to get data. Right now, the information is kind of scattered, and that can make coordinating a response more difficult. So to make any sort of decision, she, she says she just needs more data. So she's working on gathering and centralizing all that intel, assessing the availability need for things like beds, equipment, personnel, and testing, and getting and sharing more details about who actually has this virus. All right, Casey, let's talk about that issue of testing. That's been a big concern nationwide and, of course, statewide as well. Did she address testing and potentially speeding up that process? Yes, yeah, she did, Mark. She noted that people are getting frustrated with wait times once they actually send in their samples. They were originally a day or two wait time. Now people are seeing waits up to and over four days. Bono said the reason for that is many samples right now have to actually be sent to labs outside of the state. So she's working on ways to reduce that need, mainly finding more labs in Washington and exploring some alternative testing methods that might be a bit faster. All right, Casey Decker listening into that phone call with the new coronavirus czar for the state of Washington. Casey, thank you. In the meantime, we will move on. New at 6 tonight, STA is waiving fees for all services starting on Thursday. If you're planning on taking the bus, you'll be asked to use the bus's rear doors. There will also be special services available for people over the age of 60. These passengers will ride door to door in paratransit vans. They will also be limiting the number of passengers to practice safe social distancing. Trips can be scheduled the day before or on the same day. Just give at least a two hour notice, they say. Also new tonight, Fairchild Air Force Base is increasing its health protection condition. Starting today, the base access will be limited to DOD ID card holders and those required to work on base with few exceptions. The medical group main campus will remain open Monday through Friday for coronavirus testing. Their pharmacy will also remain open. Airmen and their families are asked to avoid social gatherings. They'll be asked to stay in home in line with the governor's order. All right, Mark, thank you very much. In the meantime, over on the west side of the state, researchers at the University of Washington are now studying the effects of this pandemic and all of the bans that have been set in place. So they'll be conducting that study on King County residents at the, at the epicenter of the outbreak here in our state. Through April 19th, researchers will gather data on how individuals and communities are coping with all of those measures that have been set in place to slow the spread of the virus. That means any adult living in King County can participate in the study. It's going to consist of a questionnaire and an essay up to a page in length. So stay tuned for the results on that. Following Governor Jay Inslee's stay at home order, we wanted to know how it's going to be enforced by law enforcement here in our area. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley shares what she learned today from our local agencies.
Spokane's law enforcement agencies are asking the community to take Governor Inslee's stay-at-home order seriously. That's for the sake of your health and safety as well as your families. The order to stay at home does not mean you must stay locked inside your home. You can still go outside, but you just can't gather in large groups. Real talk, the last thing anybody needs over the next two weeks are people getting tickets or even arrested. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic. That's why Spokane Police and the County Sheriff's Office say they are focused on educating the community on how to comply. In this morning's press conference, Representative Marcus Riskelli said those who are not following these new rules are hurting the community. If our law enforcement is spending precious time visiting these entities uh, three times, etc., they're not being good partners with the public. And so we need to make sure that message is known to the broader community that those folks who aren't uh, following the important rules in place to keep us healthy and keep our community safe, that they are wasted val wasting valid uh, resources and time. And that's a strain that all these people who are working around the clock can't afford and our community can't afford right now. You may still be asking, how will the order be enforced? What will the penalties be? Well, Spokane Police tweeted today, officers have no desire to make arrests. This is following another tweet asking the public to not call 911 to report people or businesses violating the order. And our Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich echoes the same thing. If deputies see large groups gathering, they will be told to disperse. When it comes down to this enforcement, we're expecting you to enforce that yourselves. We're there to remind you we are going to guide you in that direction, but if you really push it to the point where we have to do some kind of enforcement, I, I guess we will, but we shouldn't have to because again, this is not a hall monitor situation. The sheriff adds there are some businesses that are not complying and have been spoken to. He recommends calling crime check to report violations so authorities can develop a list of businesses to remind about compliance. And I asked him what the tipping point would be on the business end, and he says it's if authorities have to show up more than three times to enforce the order. I'm kind of a, a, a rule of three guy. We'll give you two warnings and the third, no more warning. I'll say it again, our local law enforcement do not want to get to this point. Now, violating the order, yes, it could result in a gross misdemeanor, which is a penalty that includes a fine or jail time. But even Steve Stockren, executive director of the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs, says we all need to work together because this should not be an issue of criminal sanctions. So right now, you can still go outside. You can still go for a run or bike ride or the grocery store, pharmacy, or other essential businesses. But outside of that, stay home and restrict your exposure to other people as much as possible. For more information on how to comply with the recent order, text HOME to 509-448-2000. Reporting from my living room and hopefully your home too, Amanda Rowley, Crime 2 News. Thank you very much, Amanda. Healthcare officials, states, counties, and cities all scrambling right now to get personal protective equipment or PPEs to keep medical workers on the front lines of this coronavirus safe. So why is there such a scramble? We're gonna connect the dots for you right now. Personal protective equipment, uh, like we said, known as PPEs, are essential to keep nurses and doctors treating coronavirus patients safe. That includes face masks, face shields, gowns, and gloves. Those items are supposed to be disposal, disposable, but the virus is not spread between patients or healthcare workers. However, we've already seen numerous reports of workers having to reuse equipment because of this shortage. So you may be asking, why doesn't the U.S. have a stockpile? Well, the answer is it does. FEMA has a strategic reserve of N95 masks, which offer a lot more protection than those loose-fitting surgical masks. And they've already started to distribute some of those masks and supplies to the hardest hit areas. But for other places, governors are now having to buy on the open market, often competing with other governors and other cities trying to do the same thing, and that is sending prices soaring. All right, taking a quick break from coronavirus coverage, getting our first taste of those spring showers that Tom promised yesterday. He's now here to let us know how long we've got kind of this March Madness weather to contend with. It is March Madness, and I, it's going to be on, uh, on again, off again all week. It'll be a lot like today, where we had some sunshine at the beginning of the day, and then we had showers developing in the afternoon. Look at the Doppler radar right now. You can see we've got rain and snow showers occurring across the area, so some areas really picking up uh, that uh, 
uh, snow and the passes right now are seeing snow. Be very, very careful. So that area of white, that's not satellite imagery. That's radar showing that that is white. And then the green indicates where we're seeing the rain occurring right now. So we're at 44 degrees, cloudy skies. Wind is out of the southwest at five miles per hour. Most of the clouds are to the north and to the east of us right now. Day planner forecast calling for again more showers at times tomorrow. 31 the low, the daytime high 49. Do not rule out even some wet snow falling in the Spokane area. Obviously it won't stick around with a daytime high of 49. Finally we see some warmer weather as we get into the weekend. Still a be better chance of rain on Sunday than Saturday, but highs climbing into the mid 50s. I'll check your 10 day outlook coming up in a few minutes. All right, Tom, thank you. So the call went out to help a local animal shelter and you responded as part of our effort to share some good news. We just wanted to say thank you to all of the families who are now fostering cats and dogs from Spokanimal. The animal shelter shared some pictures today with Krem2 of families that agreed to take in an animal while the shelter had to shut down. The Spokanimal executive director says her crew worked really hard to get those animals placed in safety before they had to shut down. The shelter closed to the public about a week ago for the safety of staff, of course, and the public. And Spokanimal says it's just extremely grateful right now that people responded when they asked. They wanted to thank everyone for coming to the rescue.